my name is Nekme Obasoge, and today I'm going to be taking you through the humanitarian work of a U.S. based registered nurse and the founder of Angels Wings African Health Empowerment Foundation. Her name is Angela Umumuewi Oriahe. She went to Nigeria a few weeks ago to perform free medical screening and treatments to locals in Lagos and Edo State. During my interview with her, we also discussed about some of the major issues affecting healthcare system in Africa. So listen to her comments about healthcare system in Nigeria. Nice to connect you on live video, Sister Angela. Oh my God, you inspired me so much. So much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, thank you for what you are doing for our people in Africa. Tell us about your organization. Your aim for Africa. Okay. So as everybody knows, mm -hmm. I'm a registered nurse. I have a BSN. I went to school in the U.S. I've been a nurse over uh, 22 years now. Oh. So, But I was, yeah, I was an LPM first. Then I went back to school. I got my bachelor's in nursing. Uh, my organization has about uh, three nurses, the board members. I'm the founder. I have uh, three nurses. Uh, one writer and uh, a lawyer, uh, of course, who is Judith Hayworker. She's the advisor of the organization. And mm -hmm. um, and our aim for Africa, because I have other African countries, I have a Rwanda in my board. Uh, our aim, we sat down. You know how my aim really is to have uh, nurses without borders, just like they have doctors without borders. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's the same thing. It's similar. So what we are trying to do as nurses is um, we want to make sure that what is killing our people is no more. So we all came together. I talked to my friends and I said, we have to do something about this. And uh, I know we don't have much funds right now. This is all com coming from uh, my pocket. And a uh, few people um, um, throw uh, something am among the board members. The uh, equipment was bought by uh, one of my friends. Some of the equipment I bought, some of them my children came in, and uh, Judith did all the t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So um, so I told them, I said, I have to be on ground for the very first one. So it's going to be all in every African countries that we need it. What really motivated yeah. me before I called all my friends together was uh, a pregnant woman with twins. Mm -hmm. She was pregnant, no no money, and yes. uh, the hospital turned highway. And the sister right there, throw a wrapper on. If you see my uh, first video, throw a wrapper on the floor, put her there, a new razor blade, you know, just did, did um, uh, an open on her there. Before she drags the two twins out, the, the, everybody, she just lost everybody. And I just, I my first video, I just lost it. I was just telling the African doctors, shame on them. Shame on them. You know, uh, you know, you shouldn't let money come in between human beings. Um, um, uh, a, a man that went to go in the community to look for uh, money to to um, to buy blood for the daughter, eight years old, and before he came back, the daughter passed. And he was just carrying the daughter with underwear, all dead, running around the whole, going crazy. So that just drove me crazy. So that yeah. was what happened. So I called my friends together and... Um, we are getting this done. You know, I uh, I know some uh, nonprofit organizations are calling me in, uh, yeah. in America to see yeah. to teach me how to raise money, but it's not registered in America yet. It's registered in Nigeria. So we are at the process of registering it, and um, in a few months we're ready to go again. But yeah. we have nurses. Yeah. We have nurses in Nigeria right now that is doing. Um, it will be doing. They will be doing every other week. Every mm. uh, okay. for the community to so center at the church or one of the schools to start checking their blood pressure. And he, he assigned a doctor to me too. If there's any problem, they go meet that person. So I have few doctors in Benin also, in case um, I'm trying to work with Giano Saiki right now too, because I don't want um, uh, so that we can do it at the Akenzua Center. That's a center right there where everybody can see it. Like mm. you see, when I was doing it, it was, it was. It was crazy. It was so many people. So mm. we want people to come. There are some people who don't want to do it, but you know, you can't really force them. Yes. 
how um, many African people can address this issue uh, affecting healthcare system in Africa. For instance, the number one will be shortages of drugs and uh, pharmaceutical products in Africa. When I'm done doing my screening, I go on the street and ask people questions. I go, I've gone in the market, but you know, I don't like videoing them because I don't want them to be scared of what they're telling me or they, they, they don't want all these people, all these pharmacists or anybody to get back at them. So I said, no, we're, we're just going to talk. I'm not going to video you guys and all that. And they will be very comfortable to talk to me. So they're telling me sometimes they would take tal uh, Panadol. They would take like, you know, uh, maybe two and two, eight a day. And they would still be feeling their, their pain. Because mm -hmm. what I was um, asking is the Tylenol and the tal uh, Tylenol arthritis that I carried. I told them how, you know, I went around to see how they were. They said, oh, my God, where, where did that one come from? Where, that one is different. We didn't hear pain all night. The Nigerian one, the Nigerian Panadol, we eat eight, and nothing will come out. And shortage of medication is money, really. It's money. Yes. This medication, some of them are fake, and they are very expensive to, to, to get. So I like like uh, you saw uh, me in um, the very first um, uh, the very first uh, uh, screening. I told yeah. you about a very well educated guy that had TB. He had he had medication, but he didn't have no food to go with it. And we all know how important nutrient is. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot buy food, obviously you cannot buy medication. And most of the medications. I will, I will just, I will just plead with the pharmaceutical uh, company or whoever it is that mm -hmm. is doing it. You are not, the, your money is temporary. When you kill people intentionally, you are going to go to go answer to God. And that is the truth. Um, the second one is a lack of a skilled health, health care personnel. Oh. Uh, you know that just is so annoying. It's so annoying <laughs> that we're we yes. It's so annoying that we are so smart and we're so well educated. But I don't know if they. I, I'm not trying to put Nigerian system down, but it's decapitating. And I don't know if if everybody has the kind of. But I, as we are, are in diaspora, I know you're in Canada and I'm in the US. We know how you do it in the U in the U.S. and in the um, in the Canada or in other Western world in Europe. When you become a nurse or a doctor, is do it yourself and the equipment. First of all, if you haven't, I w I was a nurse over almost um, over seventeen years before I went back to school for um, you know more degrees. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you are. You walk into that facility once. You're gonna be intimidated of all the equipment, and you have to know your equipment. You don't have no exactly. choice. You don't have no choice because your teacher will tell you we are not here for you to kill anybody. Yes, and 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 that will stuck in your head that you don't mm. have no choice than to know what you're doing and what you're saying and what their names are and what they're used for. So mm. I I will hope that's the kind of training that Nigerian doctors and, and uh, nurses had also. Mm. And if you train all that and you don't mm. bring it to the uh, real world, mm. then it's not useful. It's yeah. not useful when you, you, you can't do that because you know what? Everything you do in life, you must always revise it to your own self. If I was in the other side of the table, how am I going to feel if this person treat me like that or if this person is not in a hurry so I won't die? So the skill, the skill might be okay, but the mm. attitude, the attitude towards our patient in Africa or Nigeria, it, it has to change. Then yeah. the speed. We, we, we have to know emergency when we see it. You as a medical doctor or as a nurse, what nurse means in the Latin word is nurture. You, you, you know, for you to nurture, you know, if you're not nurturing the people you, that is under your care, then you're not a nurse or you're not a doctor. So I'm sitting there, I'm choking with a huge uh, mm. piece of meat in my throat that I'm, I'm being compromised, not breathing. My chest is so I'm getting numb and everything. And I know it because I'm a medical person and I'm getting dehydrated because I couldn't drink because when I drink, it, it makes a bubble in my throat. So I couldn't drink. So I haven't drunk for 
five hours in a very hot weather. So I know already I'm getting dehydrated because all my hands are getting thick and all that. So I'm there doing hamnik maneuver on myself like I was trained. I, I pick up a chair and I'm trying to do it on myself and the doctor just came carelessly. Does she mm. want to break the chair? I say, I will break this chair and I'll break the whole hospital for me to survive. I'm exactly. not yet to die. See, since you're taking your time, I'm trying to do the best I can. Oh, I'm sorry. I say, you shouldn't be sorry. You know what? You could look for a supervisor or anybody you want. You, mm. you, it, these people don't get reprimanded. So they will do whatever they want. Then the other one came from the other corner. Oh, who, 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 who do you people say need help? All these ones. I said, who are you calling all these ones? Yeah. I say, I say, who are you calling all these ones? You should be ashamed of yourself. And you're a doctor. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just... Because the way he sees me with, with, my, with my daughter and the friend, so she's thinking, uh, okay, all these are Americans. Maybe they won't hear what yes. I said. Yes. But, you know, I, and I just, I, I said to him, are you kidding? You, you address your patient. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just saying something that has happened to me that day. I said, I'm not, it's not all about you right now. It's all about me. I'm in distress. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Mm. So he, he flipped around trying to be nice after. No, you already show who you are. Be yeah, nice exactly. the very first time. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm. It just, it's a, the way, and you can see all the patients in the emergency room. God, emergency room. So the emergency room, uh, they, they say, oh, if I can come lie down there. My daughter said, where is she? There's no shit in the bed. My mom can't like, lay there. So she said, oh, okay, they will go and get shit. But you look at all the sheets. You look at all the bed. Mm. You you look at the emergency room. You say this is UBTH. What? Th. So you look at all the patient, all lo looking all compromised. You know, they we shouldn't put them in that position. What do you think uh, the government should be doing to regulate all these uh, doctors and nurses? Let's say Minister of Health is too. Mm. She is in Abuja and taking care of things. We have Commissioner of Health, right? So there should be the next person to commission of health. Let's say he's in a meeting all day. I don't know what meeting he's at, but he's in a meeting all day. He doesn't have time for this. I doesn't have time for this. I don't believe that. But mm -hmm. once in a month, let's say once in a month out of his busy schedule, I don't know what he's busy doing, but out of his busy schedule, if he can visit hospitals, we only have two hospitals, uh, the yes. renowned hospitals without the private hospitals in Benin. We have uh, the General Hospital and uh, UBTH. If you can visit those, just take like at least four, five hours of his time. Yes. Three hours here, three hours there. And every, and talk to the patient and see how they are treated without the nurses. Tell the nurses exactly. and the doctor, please, everybody mm. leave the unit. I need to make my own round. House on. We don't have, so we just, we just believe in the money. We don't, we don't care yeah. about people people are going through or what people feel is the way we treat ourselves that's how people will treat us yeah if we don't learn how to treat ourselves nicely nobody will treat you nice so exactly. if you if you if you can just take out of his busy schedule whatever he's busy uh, doing in his office and get out of that mm. air condition and go to the hospitals for his run once a month and make sure the administrator does is run every day like every administrator do here and the DON or director of nurses, matron, whatever they call it, then that okay. would be nice. And if mm. any patient report any nurse, yes. the nurse should be suspended and so they know it's serious. Yes, thank you. Like, thank you. Like any patient report us here. We will, I don't care if you're a DON or anything. I'm a supervisor. They will walk me out till they can find what has went wrong they won't say, oh, okay, Angela, you're the supervisor. We're not gonna, we're not gonna talk. No. Mm -hmm. They'll say, okay, this patient said, said, said that this and this and this. Can you please leave the unit, the patient's area? I will leave. I won't have no choice mm -hmm. than to leave. Then when yes. they when they investigate everything for three days and they see that there was nothing, uh, everybody said no, Angela didn't do anything, mm -hmm. then I'll come back to my unit or to my okay. to my to, to my facility. But we don't have all that. Patient could just okay. say, oh, this nurse, did this, uh, we brush it off. We as doctors and nurses, we shouldn't have rights over, nurse, uh, uh, over the patient. In America, in the Canada, in everywhere in, yeah. in the Western world, the patient is the patient's right. There's nothing like uh, nurses and doctors' right. But they are not allowed to abuse us. They are not yeah. allowed to hit us. They are not allowed to speak uh, bad words to us either. But we... 
as nurses and doctors. We take care of them. We are not allowed to abuse them verbally, okay. and we are mm -hmm. not allowed to abuse them physically, and we are mm -hmm. not allowed to uh, to exploit them, to take their money. All, all that rules should mm -hmm. go with everybody. Because you know what? The, your attitude towards a sick person and your word towards a sick person goes a long way. It, it, yes. it determines if they will heal faster, believe it or not. Your mm -hmm. attitude and your words will heal a patient faster than the medication. Yeah. They will take their medication and they will be on therapy, but when you are nurturing them, that, that's, yes. you know, you, you can compare with people who have family love and people who don't have anybody. Depression Thank will kill you, you first. Do you think um, our uh, medical personnel, they are not well trained? They might be well trained, but knowing us, knowing our attitudes towards things, we need to stop all that. Oh, my father know him. My sister know him. I was about to fail. So they added 20 points to my point to pass. And that's the reality. I don't care who likes it or not. Uh, See, it's okay. a bad time. We have to mm. be saying the truth. Because the truth would be only the thing that would set Nigeria or Africa free. So when you're in nursing school, you know when you're in nursing school in the Western world, in America, Canada, mm. or anything, is, is the army. Do it yourself. When they see you looking around to the other side, you are going to be, you, you're, you're done. They will throw you out of the nursing school. So oh if you did, you did it on your own. I don't care how smart or how dumb you are. So, but over there is, oh, okay, it's my mother's friend. It's my father's friend. Okay, yeah. I had uh, 60%, but they needed 70 so they don't attend. But no, no. If you didn't come to a clinic, you, you should be, you should, you, you should repeat. Or you should you you should fail just like we are all here. Every nurse in America will have stories to tell. If you haven't cried at being in nursing school, you haven't been to nursing school in America because you you all you depend on is yourself, whether it's the classwork or not, or in a clinical. And when you're not doing well, your teacher will tell you, "Watch out, you're not doing well. You're gonna fail." And you know what? If you don't straighten up and and even put extra extra strength that you don't have anymore you're gonna fail and your money will be gone so we should we should apply this thing to to nigeria because everywhere yes. we go we just we're just so raised not to do things right and it's, it's right so exactly so uh the next one is a uh, accessibility and availability health care for instance uh, people in the rural area they don't have access to healthcare. How can we improve uh, that area? Okay, the rural area is what I'm really interested in. Because I know, like in Benin, they say even when you're in Benin, you're still not accessible to healthcare, to tell you the truth. You have to have the money to be accessible to a healthcare. Because when you go to other hospitals, the line alone will scare you. But are they accessible to the private one? No, they can't. If you can't afford it, you yeah. can't go there. But the one that you can afford, you're on the line to God knows till next year. Then God forbid yeah. anything happen to you, you're you're dead on the line, be, be waiting on the line. So the, the, God forbid you you throw a cloth. If he say if he say cloth, oh I'm having chest pain and all that. Because when we say chest pain here, if you're an emergency and there's so many people, we take you over. Somebody who said, "Oh, I'm um, my leg. I just I just broke my leg, or I just I'm uh, I'm bleeding." Chest pain supersede everything because you don't know what's in that chest. You don't know if that person is uh, uh, just through a clock, and uh, if he blocks if he blocks the lungs or blocks the airway, that that's the end. So we have to do we have to do that MRI quick to make sure that that person is not having a, a heart attack or anything. But when we say chest pain in a, in a, oh, it's not your portion, sit down, sit down, drink water. What would that do? What would drinking water do or what would sit down do? Like, I'm looking at them like, oh my God, you guys, are you guys kidding me? Drink water and sit down? Where's the doctor and the nurses? No, this is not drink water and sit down. This is like, go do chest x-ray like right now, tomorrow. <laughs> so I look at them, I'm like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> What? <laughs> so the people in Benin, they are having all that uh, calamity there. Then the people yes. in the village don't even have nothing. Uh, to nothing. Even, uh, they will say, okay, uh, head center. This is head center. The nurse is not there. 
the, the nurse is not at the health center. So when you get there, you're on your own. You just yes. have to turn around and, 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 and go and go die or something. I don't know. So yeah. our plan is, uh, mm. our plan is, you see how they have urgent care everywhere. Mm. You know, like the, the little cities around you, if you are in a big city with all the hospitals, but the little cities around you have mm. walking clinic. That's what they call okay. it, urgent care. At least uh, yes. you know you have a headache, you, you can walk into a nurse practitioner and if, mm. they, if they think it's something serious, they mm. will call the ambulance and they will take you to the hospital. So if these people are coming from the farm in the village and they just mm. call their hand, uh, instead mm. of wrapping it with that dirty um, uh, uh, cloth and all that, at least they mm. can walk into a place where a nurse will be there at least <laughs> till about a reasonable time, 6 p.m. Yeah. or 7 p.m. and uh, give them a first aid. And uh, yes. have a doctor call in. So mm. I, you know, we're trying to work hard on that because it would take so much. It would take so much fun to do all that. Where you know, it's gradually we we we'll get done. But right now, what we are doing is setting up. You know, just doing uh, um doing screening all we can. As you see, yes. we, we catch up so many blood pressure. So how can you even do like uh, the widows? We did over three hundred. I'm telling you, not even I can't stand straight and tell you I had 20 that was uh, just perfect. Huh. And, uh, and, and, and you, you should see it in their face, so vulnerable. Everybody wants to tell me stuff, and you know, oh my God, it's it's sad. And you you don't go go for your physical, you don't go check up, you don't do yes. blood, uh, you don't do your blood count every year like we do. You no nobody checks your heart, nobody checks your chest, nobody checks your calcium level to see if you need calcium to, to, to be ingested because we women will lose calcium easily and we need at, at least 1200 milligrams every day especially mm. when you are growing but we don't mm. know all that, we just eat and we lie down and we, you mm. know, it, it accumulates people don't know yes. that uh, weak manufacturing capacity you know, I did a show uh, last was it last two months about uh, counterfeit materials in Africa this show, uh, according to uh, World Health Organization, more than yes. 120,000 people die every year from fake anti-malaria drugs. Our um, country is the kind that nobody screens anything. Please, it's a junkyard. Come on, junk it up. Mm -hmm. nobody, yes. nobody do their job. Even when if somebody is trying to do their job, we still get frustrated and they throw millions in, in their face. They will not do their job. That is the <laughs> truth. Look at the woman. Uh, was she a uh, doctor? I don't remember her name. That was really screening. That was busting the drug drugs in Nigeria, the fake drugs and all that. Did she get killed? See, we as a nation, we must know what the truth. Don't be mad because somebody, somebody didn't hate you because they are telling you the truth. The truth is the truth. When you bring fake drugs into our country, you're going to finish the whole nation. Yes. Because that fake drug will kill them faster than cancer will kill them. And that is the truth. What, what the, because what, when somebody, when somebody has an infection and yes. you're telling them, oh, this is uh, antibiotics for you, for you to treat your infection. Meanwhile, that antibiotics is not antibiotics, it's powder. So that means that infection is not being treated. It's going down. It's going down. And it's going down. You kill that person. At least yeah. you give it seven days. They're gone. You so know, why are we doing this to our own people? Why are we letting people come from their country and do yeah. whatever they want in our country? In most is cases, it because we are not educated? Is it because we are not smart enough? What is wrong with us? You know what? You will, you will think Nigeria is over 50 years old. We should know how to treat malaria by this time. That's one of the... Uh, 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 just like you say America and Canada. Uh, uh, they, they don't know uh, what um, uh, uh, sinuses and uh, uh, flu medication is. That's their, that's their disease because due to the cold. Mm. So we... We are malaria. We know malaria right from time. Why have we not come up with something that will cure malaria for once? And we don't need Western world. We don't need China. We don't need anybody to produce Thank malaria you. medication. Thank you. For the diabetes screening um, uh, equipment that we took, I took about uh, 10 of them. 
uh, to uh, at, at least ten uh, to fit ten stations. Then um, here, uh, when, so I went to the pharmacy in Nigeria just to make sure in case we're mm -hmm. running out of equipment, I I'll know what to budget to to the the um the 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 um the um uh the diabetes screening and um uh, uh, uh lancet oh my god i hold my head i said why is this fifty thousand naira why is this fifty thousand naira it's so high it's fifty that is fifty fifty thousand naira is about what a hundred and fifty dollars i mean uh, we we had one uh each some of them fifty some of them, you know, some of them are battery less and some of them has battery. So I look I look at I look at the, the woman, I say, Wow. I say, Where is this made? She said, oh, it's foreign. I said, Why do we need foreign foreign just to check people's uh, is, people are dropping dead out of high blood sugar? <clears throat> if you don't know you are diabetic, it could just go high or go low and you fall and you die there everybody say, oh which which which, which, no, which not. is this yeah this person is diabetic and this person is hypoglycemic yes. uh, uh, 30 uh, uh, 30 if you're mm -hmm. if you're below 30 if you're 30 you're, you're you're gone except you can see speak and somebody can just put candy in your mouth right right away that's the only way you will get up but if that person don't know you are diabetic mm -hmm. or you didn't know what to do you're gonna die <laughs> how <Okay>. can we <laughs> this is that I have medication, but I don't have food. Can oh. you imagine? So and you can from the way from the way he carries himself, and from the way he speaks, you mm. can see he's a very learned person that the the, the, the society has failed. Mm. So I look at him. I said, "Oh my God, wow!" Thank you. So he told me he was very honest. He said, "I'm a TB patient." I have my medication, sister, but I don't hey, oh. So the nurses are going to be following up with him to make sure he has some nutrients, at least, you know, even if it's uh, 1,000, 2,000 naira for them to mm. be giving him to, to, to stop yes. up a little bit, uh, you know. So whatever I gave him that day, I know it's going to last him till they do the next screening. I told yeah. him to go to the next screening. Yeah. So they, um, they have his number. And uh, yeah, I he need talk that. with him yet, but Huh? He needs a he needs a proper nutrition in order to take those yes. medications. Yes, he was very skinny. So in this case, how can we encourage locals about their their heads? You know, how can we encourage them about their to take their heads uh, as a priority? See, apart from a few people, um, they, they, they one woman or two that refused to take theirs, they were all were so happy. At times, some of them would look at me. And say, sister, this is free. I said, that's what the banner said. It's free. Because they are not used to anything that is free anymore. One woman said, for, <laughs> for us to take, take our blood pressure, that's not thousands now, uh, sister. We get one nurse when they come. Now, that's why all my equipment are being handled by non-nurses. Like the, the one in Benin is being handled by my sister. I don't let the nurses carry my equipment home. I have a bag in each station. So what I do, I assign somebody to hold that bag and we take inventories. Oh, we take yeah. inventories of what is there because I, I, the nurses were so good. They're awesome. But you know, what? Oh. not that I don't trust them, but we need those equipment for the people that need it. You can't, you can't trade with that. We have to teach. It, it's a graduate thing. We have to teach people how to be honest, how to do things the right mm -hmm. way. We don't know. We always... Like want to push things under the rug, and which yeah. is um, which is just the whole system. Wait. And the thing, the thing is, the thing is, the government should know that when they, when people come to the hospital, they pay money. They should put that money into the hospital. The environment is very important because that's the first line of infection. Eh, where you where you disinfect the whole place and make every the curtain look nice. There's no curtains mm -hmm. in the emergency room. No cutting in any of the windows. The windows are as dirty as anything. There is nothing. I mean, you are, even when they are sick, please make the environment look nice. Then mm. the man that the brother-in-law was out to lay between the dead bodies was with him. He said, 
Madam, I can come with you right now with the with the camera and all that, so I can tell the doctor. So they tell me I'm lying. My brother-in-law had appendicitis, and there was a a, a, a feces coming out of the a sutures. I said, "Oh my God, no, there is no." He said, "Yes." I had to rush him back there. When we get there, there there's every day. Every day, madam, every day, dead body in Ikorodu General Hospital. Every, if you go there, it's like a dead squat. He said, eh, nobody, even the, the doctors will say, no, we're sure. We, we don't eh, eh, go tell the government to hire more doctors. You will just say, only one doctor taking care of God knows how many. Yeah. So we, we, when they came without infection, they tell the, the, the brother, eh, this, this bed is empty now. They, they just leave the dead body there. The, the owners come for them. Whether it's a day, old, whether it's two days old, he said, he said, madam, they told my brother-in-law to lie. He said, he said, tell the doctor, no, I'm not gonna be quiet. What is this? These two people are, these four people are dead. You are telling my my, my brother-in-law to lie in between them. What does that mean? You want to kill him too? So he said, we started fighting. I thank you so much, Sister Angela, for what you are doing. I wish we have more, more, more of you in, in Nigeria. You see the type of, uh, the, the great job you did now. If, if we have 100 people like you in Edo State, what do you think Edo State will become? Great! It will be good. So, be, I, I'm, I'm encouraging every nurse in, in diaspora, whether in Europe or in America, in Canada, we can do the little we can. We can come yeah. together because that's how the Doctors Without Borders came, came about. Yeah. They are not even Africans. So if if somebody that is visiting Africa, seeing this, and is getting and he, 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 he is is driving that person crazy, and that person has everything where they are coming from, but their interest is to help uh, other people that don't have. What about us? What about us that are that are directly affected? <coughs> so I will encourage every nurse to do the best they can when you go home i know it's a vacation time but you can take one week out of two weeks and try to touch only if it's 100 people you're still doing right